Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. PNL Patreon family. Big up on yourself. And if you have not yet joined the PNL Patreon family, click on the link in the description below and sign up. Being a part of the PNL Patreon family is your way of supporting this movement. Now, when we start the journey, we are still going to be in the parish of St. Elizabeth. Continue to sit back, continue to relax, and continue to enjoy this journey with me. So, yesterday, I told you about an accident that took place on Monday, January 2, 2023, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It took place at Namprel Road, right in the vicinity of the Texaco gas station in Negril, in the parish of Westmoreland. So if you look on your screen, that is exactly where the accident took place. Looking at the photo, you are looking in an easterly direction. That's the same direction in which the doctor who was driving the RAV4 was traveling. If you notice, the cones are all on the right side of the road. The side where the accident took place. Like I said yesterday, the young female doctor, without due care and attention, she overtook a vehicle that was traveling in front of her. If you look at your screen now, that is a photograph of the Toyota RAV4 that the young doctor was driving. You see the point of impact? Now, on your screen is what is left of the green Covia motorcycle that 19-year-old Giovanni Garden was riding. Also, it has been confirmed that Giovanni Garden, he died. As a matter of fact, he died from the said evening of the accident. Monday, January 2, 2022, about 6.30. So, the young doctor, she is now facing a charge of manslaughter or causing death by dangerous driving. This was straight carelessness. And I am hoping that the doctor faced the full force of the law. Condolences to Giovanni's family. Also, yesterday, I told you about an accident that claimed the life of a JDF soldier. I told you that the details were sketchy, so I did some digging. And I'm going to tell you exactly how this accident took place. But first, <laughs> but first, my nice, clean students of medicine. <laughs> Thank you. The word is aorta. Not the word I used yesterday. My viewers, my subscribers, there is a lesson to be learned here. The lesson is, whenever we are doing a research, check with more than one source. The mistake I made yesterday was that I used the first source that I found. So it's not like I made up the word. So the correct word is aorta. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Secondly, I asked, well, someone said I insinuated that none was done, but I did no such thing. However, if you thought I was insinuating, that's your interpretation. The questions I asked were, one, was any x-ray done on Private Morris? And two, wouldn't an x-ray show what was happening inside of him? Well, someone who works at a hospital and someone who I can rely on to answer these questions responded to me this morning. The person's response is on your screen. The person said, Good morning. X-rays are done on all accident victims. It would be hard for an X-ray to pick up that info. CT scan and MRI would be the best tool. And if you check the comments yesterday, that is what most persons with any biological knowledge <laughs> were saying. So by now, you must realize that I was never a biology student. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> All right? So, the accident took place along the Stewie main road. Not Ashton, like I stated yesterday. Stewie is in the Betteltown police area in the parish of Westmoreland. So, if you look on your screen, there is a photograph of the road where the accident took place. The truck and the soldier lorry were still on the ground. Now, there is another photograph of when they were removed. So, here is how the accident took place. The JDF soldier lorry. It was being driven by a 24-year-old Lance Corporal. 
In the jeep with him was 20-year-old Private Giovanni Morris. Giovanni, he's from Top Lincoln in Grangehill. Not Church Lincoln like I stated yesterday. You know, at the end of this story, I'm going to be pointing out something to you. Stand by for it. So, the Toyota Land Cruiser, also known as the Soda Larry, it was traveling from Darlistan towards Betteltown direction. A white 2003 Haino motor truck being driven by a man named Mr. Isaac Watson. He is 59 years old and he is living at a Betteltown address. He was coming in the opposite direction. Another man was a passenger in the truck. We are learning that the JDF Lance Corporal, he had just completed negotiating a right-hand corner when he ended up losing control of the soldier Larry. As a result, it veered further right and collided into the front right section of the Hino truck, then rushed off the roadway and to the right embankment. As a result, the driver of the truck, he ended up losing control of it. The truck, it also ran off the roadway and turned over and the embankment. Now, if you look on your screen, those are photographs of what's left of the Soldier Larry and the truck. We are learning that the driver of the truck, Mr. Isaac Watson, he's in a very serious condition. He was first transported to the Savannah Lamar Hospital, but he was later transferred to the Mandeville Hospital. Let's hope he survived. I am sure that the Lance Corporal who was driving this Soldier Larry, he will be facing charges. Like I said yesterday, some of these JDF soldiers, they might drive too reckless upon the road. So like I said yesterday, Private Giovanni Morris, age 20 years old, he died in hospital as a result of the accident. Private Morris, he's from Top Lincoln in Grangehill. Now, you remember that yesterday, I carried a story about a man. He's popularly known as Fleshy. Fleshy is 62 years old. Well, Fleshy, he was found some distance behind his house at Top Lincoln with a piece of electrical card tied around his neck and tied to a tree. It is suspected that Fleshy, he took his own three points. Someone sent me this WhatsApp message this morning. I'm going to read it. It says, Blessings, Papai. The little young soldier, Maris, belongs to right in front of Fleshy. Two very large family yard facing each other. Everybody grew together and right now, them in some kind of war. And look, the two family crying. I believe God is showing us a sign that we must live good. Are you seeing what the person is saying? What are your comments about what this person has said? Drop it in the comment section below. <laughs> Why may I tell you? In this next incident, this one took place last night, January 3, 2022, about 11 o'clock. It took place right in the vicinity of the Open Bible Church at Main Street in Mount Salem in the parish of St. James. We are learning that a man, his name is Nicholas Clark, but he's popularly known as Kid. Kid was said to be in his late 20s. He was living at the house where this incident took place on Main Street in Mount Salem. It is said that kid, he was at home with a family member when he went outside to do something. But someone was there waiting on kid and for whatever reason, that person or those persons wanted him dead. So shortly thereafter, several gunshots were heard. The family member took cover and when the shooting subsided, the family member went to investigate. There was Kid lying face down in the living room in a pool of blood. The police were called and when they went to the scene, there was Kid with multiple gunshot wounds all over his body. He appeared to have died on the spot. When this crime scene was processed, 12 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. In this next incident, a mother and a son were shot and killed in Providence District near Huomud in Christiana in the parish of Manchester. Both of them are on your screen. Her name is Althea Rowe. She is 
52 years old and she was said to be a bartender. His name is Cleon Parma. He is 35 years old and we are getting reports that Cleon, he was wanted by the police for gun-related offences. It is also being said that Cleon, he was a well-known hoodlum. We are learning that Althea, she left work on Saturday, December 31, 2022 and she went to visit her son who lived nearby. That was the last time Althea was seen or heard from. Several attempts were made to contact her, but this was to no avail. Yesterday, Tuesday, January 3, 2023, a concerned relative went to Cleon's home where Althea and Cleon, they were seen lifeless and decomposing. The police were called and it was observed that both of them, they had received gunshot wounds to their head and their upper body. They were killed execution style, you see? <laughs> what you must realize, you know, what we must realize and appreciate is that whenever a hoodlum is wanted by the police, most likely he's also wanted by other hoodlums. You agree or you disagree? Now, I don't know whether or not Cleon's mother, Althea, supported her son's criminal lifestyle, but whoever it was that came for her son, they decided that Althea, the mother, is going with him. Sad indeed. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Are you tired of hearing about the killings taking place in Jamaica? Are you tired of the killings that are taking place in Jamaica? You are? So my question to you is, what are you doing for it to stop? Are you reporting suspicious activities to the relevant authorities? Do you know or have suspicions as to where an illegal gun or illegal guns are being hidden? Have you reported it or are you seeing no evil and hearing no evil? Are you afraid to give information to the police? What? Are you afraid to give them information and then go back and tell the hoodlums? But guess what? The police don't have to know who is giving the information. You can call 119. You can call 311. The JDF, the Jamaica Defense Force, they also have a tip line. You can call or WhatsApp them. The number is 876 837 8888. That's 876 837 8888. You see, if you are sitting down and waiting for outsiders to come to Jamaica, come solve our problems, that will never happen. The FBI or Scotland Yard, they have no jurisdiction over Jamaica or Jamaicans in Jamaica. Let's all play our part. And remember, <laughs> remember, hit on the love button. Also, if you have not yet subscribed, hit on the subscribe button. As also, hit on the notification bell. Then click all so that whenever we upload a new video, you will be the first to be notified. Now, this one, it took place yesterday afternoon. Tuesday, January 3, 2022, about some minutes to 1 o'clock. It took place at Goldsmith Lane at Waterworks in the parish of Westmoreland. That young man on your screen. His name is Shamari Hansen, but he's popularly known as Shami. Just last month, December 10, Shami, he celebrated his 22nd birthday. He lived at Goldsmith Lane, Waterworks in the parish of Westmoreland. Now, this is what we are learning and what I'm going to be reporting are the allegations by the police. Alright? The police are saying that they were on patrol in the area when they saw Shami walking towards them in the opposite direction. They are saying that Shami, he looked in their direction and he ran off. The police are also saying that they chased Shami and he pulled a gun and opened gunfire at them. They are saying that they took evasive action and returned the fire and Shami, he was shot and injured. They are also saying he was found clutching 
a Taurus 9mm pistol with the serial number intact, affixed with a magazine containing two rounds of 9mm cartridges. Shami, he was taken to the Savannah Lamar Public Hospital where he was pronounced DEAD. In the come, are carrying out investigation. Now, I have seen where some persons, they are saying that Shami, he was a good youth and the police killed him in cold blood. If you have any information about what took place, contact Indicom. Now, in the final story for today and in our next video, I will be updating this story. That man on your screen, his name is Horace McDermott. He was said to be in his 50s. Horace McDermott, he is a corporal of police. He has been in the police force for over 30 years and he has worked in the parish of Westmoreland all those years. Corporal McDermott, he was married, well, I'm not sure if he divorced, but he and his wife, they separated many years ago. It is said that Corporal McDermott, he was living alone at Landailo in the parish of Westmoreland. I am also learning that he was on vacation leave. Corporal McDermott, he was watching some videos on Facebook and he was sharing them to his page. Five days ago, he shared a video and this is how he captioned that video. If you look on your screen, it says, The causes of separation in a family, close relatives, friends and associates. Four days ago, this was a caption for another video. I am sick of the season of sickness. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The last post he made on Facebook was made on New Year's Eve. It was captioned, simply, too much pain. We are told that Carpal McDermott, he usually get up early in the mornings and water his flowers, but he was not seen this morning watering them. As a result, a neighbor went to check on him. Carpal McDermott, he was found with his licensed 9mm pistol in one hand and a cell phone in another hand. The police were informed and like I told you, I'll be updating this story in another video because it's only preliminary reports that I'm getting so far. Carpal McDermott, he was shot and it is suspected that he died from last night. Based on the police investigation so far, they are suspecting that Carpal McDermott might have taken his own life. Sad indeed. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend for tell a friend for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. Brick Silver Sin. Criminals, 